So you've decided to come to South Italy in the summer. Now, you're probably gonna guess that I'm not gonna say this is the best time of the year to visit because in reality it isn't, but we're gonna turn those lemons into lemonade and in this video, I'm gonna share with you the five things you can really expect from holidaying here in South Italy in the summer and how you can turn those into a much better experience. Let's get into the video. Ah, before we do, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my content. Now let's get into the video. The first thing you will want to be aware of is the fact that in the summer in South Italy, the temperatures are really high and this is becoming the norm now. It's not like a one-off situation. For example, in the last couple of summers here in Sicily, temperatures have exceeded 40 degrees. I cannot even begin to tell you how difficult it is to function in those temperatures, even to do simple day-to-day -day activities, let alone coming here as a tourist and exploring in that heat. It's tough. And so you need to be aware of this so you can take the necessary precautions and measures to try to make your experience that little bit better. Now, if you want some more tips on this, I suggest you watch this video up here next, where I give you some more in-depth tips on how to manage with the heat here in South Italy, because honestly, it's extreme. The first thing you need to know though, is if you have booked any activities in any city locations in the south of Italy, in the summer months, they become a little bit like ghost towns because the residents and people who live there tend to escape the sticky humidity and heat of the city areas and go to the mountains or to the beach. So it can be difficult sometimes, especially in the afternoons when the sun is at its strongest and at its peak, to kind of go exploring in city locations because the humidity is very strong. It really does make the heat feel unbearable. So bear that in mind, um, city locations are not often the best places to visit in the summer for this reason. I will also say to you that you need to make sure you always have bottles of water with you. Now, in most Italian cities, you will find free taps on the street where you can fill up your bottles of water, usually with water from the local mountains. So make sure you utilize that and keep yourself hydrated. Make sure that you're wearing light, loose, comfortable clothing, linen and cotton are popular choices for Italian people. Also, make sure you invest in a little paper fan. This can be wonderful because it's a very Italian thing to whip out a fan and start fanning yourself when you start to feel a bit hot. So consider investing in one once you're here. It can even double up as a souvenir for once you go back home. But I guarantee that you'll really appreciate it, especially in the height of the summer sun. I also recommend buying a hat, investing in a hat. You'll definitely need it, particularly if you are in any open spaces. And then last but not least, of course, sun cream, please. I made the mistake, and I did this for like the first couple of years of living here, of thinking the sun was like how it is back in the UK, but it's not. It's literally like putting your head in the microwave here in South Italy. The sun is intense, and literally within like an hour, you can take more color than if you stayed under the sun all day back in the UK. So bear that in mind, it's very deceptive, you might think it's the same strength and that you can manage with the sun, but I promise you it isn't. And I've seen many tourists get caught out and be absolutely red as a lobster because they didn't anticipate the sun to be so strong. So really important to remember with these high temperatures, you've got to look after yourself, make sure that you're not doing any kind of strenuous activities, make sure as well your accommodation has air conditioning or at least at the bare minimum an electric fan to keep you cool. These are all really, really important considerations with these high temperatures. There were so many news reports in recent years of tourists coming unstuck because they started to feel ill, started to collapse because they weren't used to the high temperatures. It is a thing. Unfortunately, it's not a one-off occurrence anymore. So you do need to come here with that kind of awareness and preparation in order for it not to ruin your holiday. Coupled in with the heat, of course, it brings about those lovely zanzara or mosquitoes, as they are also known as. And this is another thing, they will eat you alive. And I've already had my first few bites and we are just at the beginning of April. So I promise you that in a couple of months, they are gonna be back with a vengeance. So make sure that you have 
mosquito repellent to hand and that you keep reapplying it throughout the day. They are little buggers. They find a way to bite you wherever it may be. Ankles, fingers, hands, arms, neck, back. Wherever they get a chance, they're there. Make sure that you have this anti-mosquito repellent with you so that you can protect yourself in the best way possible. Um, and even consider if you have any kind of like reaction to um, any kind of bite, invest in some antihistamine cream or tablets to protect you in this way. But yeah, it's a thing. So make sure that you come well prepared with this in mind as well. Okay, the second thing you need to be aware of is that there are gonna be hordes of tourists here in the summer. That's right, hordes of tourists. And this can really impact your experience because it means you're gonna be waiting longer at certain hotspots, typical tourist locations, museums, galleries, churches, wherever it may be, there are gonna be more people waiting to have that same experience as you, which is gonna mean that you're gonna spend longer to even begin to experience that particular attraction. It also means the beaches are going to be absolutely rammed. And this really does, in my opinion, take away from the magical experience of being by the sea here in South Italy. So this is another factor to consider. Also just the general cost of things is going to be higher. We all know peak season, everything goes up in price. Hotels, Lido's, any kind of service which caters for tourists always costs that little bit more during the summer months. So there are quite a few things that you need to factor in when it comes to the amount of people that come here during the summer. Now some tips for you to make your experience easier. Try to see how many locations you can pre-book tickets for online ahead of your arrival. Now do bear in mind that a lot of these places, particularly if it's an outdoor attraction, may not offer you a refund if the weather is bad, for example. So you do have to consider this as well. But if you're willing to take a risk or if your location is indoors and it's not weather dependent, then I highly recommend looking online to see if you can pre-book tickets. It's gonna save you queuing up, it's gonna save a bit of time at the beginning of your experience. And when it's already really hot outside, you don't wanna spend like 30 to 40 minutes in a line, maybe under the beating sun. So have a look online and see how many places you can pre-book tickets for in advance. As well as if you plan to take the train anywhere, this is another really good tip. Local train travel, it doesn't really change anything. You can book tickets online locally and across Italy as a whole, but for local train journeys, the price tends to stay the same. However, if you plan to do like a long distance train trip, for example, if you plan to go from the north to the south of Italy, then those tickets are a lot cheaper when booked in advance. So that's something else to note. If you know that you're definitely going to be in Italy on a particular date and every other part of your holiday is arranged, really consider booking your train tickets at that stage as well because you will definitely save a lot of money um, by doing that and I highly recommend that too. Now when it comes to beaches, woo, well, you have a couple of options here. Either you wake up at the crack of dawn and get your little ass down to the beach and secure your space on the free beach, or if you don't fancy doing that, because let's face it, you're on holiday, then you need to maybe consider investing and having a bed in a Lido. It really depends on where you are. Some free beaches are very big and can accommodate the large number of tourists, albeit it will still be busy. You're not necessarily directly on top of one another, but other beaches, oh goodness, like Mondello, for example. I always use Mondello because I'm here in Palermo and it's the one beach everybody talks about going to. But in the summer months, the Lidos have a large part of the beach fenced off for their use which leaves just a really thin strip of so-called free beach, which means that there isn't enough space for everybody. People are on top of one another and it's not a really comfortable experience. So in those kinds of situations, I would recommend that you book a Lido because at least you have a bed, you have your own space and you have like a section of the beach that is kind of just for you. So really do your homework. It all depends on where in South Italy you are. I would say though, Lido's are probably your best bet if you're in a particularly busy part of South Italy, just because the beaches are going to be unbearable. And also, I say this with the greatest of respect, but Italian people often don't really understand about personal space and the boundaries that people sometimes like to have. Like, 
it really winds me up and I had this just the other day as well consider we are well we were in March when we went to Mondello for the first time this year and Mondello's a, a big beach when the Lido's aren't open and you know like there was enough space for everybody yeah of course we've got a lovely position on the beach and somebody decides to sit band next to us but why like you have the entire beach this is not the height of summer but this is just to give you an idea of how frustrating it can be sometimes so at least if you have a bed in the lido you've got your space and you can kind of feel a bit more comfortable in that way so this is definitely something that i would recommend in terms of the cost of services well there's not a lot you can really do about that unfortunately it is just how things are during the whole peak season so if you want to save money just don't come in the summer like that would be my suggestion to you but other than that there's not really a lot you can do try to research where the locals go in terms of to buy food and drink do the typical italian thing especially if you're going to the beach go to the bar buy a panino buy some street food eat it on the beach that's a really really typical italian thing to do and um, it's usually the, the least expensive option as well. You can even go to the supermarket, buy some fresh bread. They will even make, the majority of supermarkets do this if they have a meat counter. They will make the panino with like the cheese, with the meat, whatever you want. And then you can take that to the beach. But yeah, you do have to kind of reassess things a little bit when you come here in the summer due to the sheer volume of people. So it's definitely something to bear in mind. The third thing you need to be aware of particularly applies to the month of August and sometimes it creeps into the beginning part of September as well but you will find businesses closed and I've spoken about this in many other videos as well but this is the period of Ferragosto which is the traditional Italian summer holiday and not every business because some businesses are switched on and savvy and they want to make some money during that time but for the majority of small independent traders who don't necessarily uh, rely on the tourist industry, they will close during a period of time in August, one week, two weeks, some take the entire month off, some take the latter part of August into the beginning of September off. It all depends on the business. But what that means for you as a tourist is if you plan to come here and try to discover some of the more local places where the locals go to eat and drink for example you may find those places closed in the month of august so yes this is something to be aware of in order to make your life easier come up with a couple of different options of as to where to go to eat and drink just in case you find one of those businesses closed um try to avoid the tourist hotspots if you can when it comes to eating and drinking because I hate to say it, but it's real. You will pay more at these places and not necessarily receive the best quality of food for that price tag. So yes, come up with a few different options. Have a plan A, B, and maybe even a C um, as to where to go to eat and drink because you will find some of those places will be closed during the month of August. So you kind of need to be a bit prepared. Now, if you literally have no idea where to go for this information on the best places to eat and the best things to do, like a local, then I can be of help. I have just launched a personalized travel guide at this moment just for Palermo, where I will create a tailored package just for you with things to do, places to go, what to eat, where to go, to have a truly authentic Italian experience. You can find all the details on my website below, MissBrittley.com. I'll link it up here. But if you plan to come to Palermo in particular, this guide will be invaluable for you because it's catered just for you, your needs, your requirements. But it's also going to be something very, very authentic. So go check that out. Okay, the fourth thing you need to be aware of is that you'll likely find mountains of rubbish, particularly in the popular tourist places oh this breaks my heart but it's real like here in palermo in the summer it's like every single year the rubbish bins pile high like the andes mountains it's a regular occurrence a lot of it is because the infrastructure for rubbish collection here is flawed completely like it just cannot cope it's not a reliable structure but that aside the sheer volume of people as well doesn't help so much when you know, rubbish bins get filled up a lot quicker, the collections aren't necessarily increased 
to cope with this. And so you will find parts of Palermo, parts of many other cities in the south of Italy that get quite dirty at this time of year. So bear that in mind, okay? It is quite normal, especially when you have a lot of people descending upon a particular part of Italy in a very short period of time. Now, on the most part, Italian people, especially when they go to the beach, they're very considerate. They will pack up their belongings, they will um, separate them if that particular part of Italy recycles. Like, you know, you will find people who are very conscious of where they are. Unfortunately, as with anywhere in the world, you will also find people who are the complete opposite and who will leave their rubbish around outside of the bin, even on the beach. It's one of those things. Um, but essentially, you do have to understand that certain parts of Italy will be a bit dirtier at that time of year. And this can even affect the sea quality as well. All of the people in the sea, any rubbish that people don't throw away ends up in the water. You do have to factor in, this can happen. And so it is something that you need to also be aware of. Now, in terms of what you can do to make your experience easier in this respect, well, it's a tricky one. The only thing I can say is to take personal responsibility for your rubbish when you're here. Make sure you're disposing of it in the best way possible, recycling wherever you can, and just looking after the space that you come to. We can't be responsible for other people, sadly, but we can always be responsible for ourselves and our actions. And so that's the piece of advice I can give to you. Be patient. It isn't like this all year round, necessarily. The rubbish collection is a bit of a taboo subject. Um, I've referenced it in previous videos, but it does get worse in the summer for the reasons I've mentioned before. So just be patient, make sure you're looking after your own rubbish and being as tidy as you possibly can. And I promise after a while, you don't notice it quite as much. The next thing and the fifth thing that you need to be aware of when you're visiting South Italy in the summer is that there is a real easy going vibe. It's beautiful. And I say this is actually a positive, but for some people they're not used to this because if you come from a really busy place and you want to have an active holiday, the summers here in South Italy are slow. A lot of factors, the temperature, the fact that people are on holiday and they just want to relax and do nothing. These are things that you have to factor in. Also, schools here in South Italy and in Italy in general tend to close in June. Some students will stay on until July, particularly if they have exams, but the majority of students will finish in June, which means that if you'd planned to come here before July or August, when school holidays typically occur in other countries around the world, you may be disappointed to find that beaches are packed full of screaming kids. And this is the reason why, because um, schools here in Italy finish a lot earlier. So that's something else to consider. And it also contributes to this easygoing vibe because there isn't much of a routine here in the summer. August for me is like a dead month. It's like a cancellation with a big cross because lots of places are closed. There's like a super relaxed holiday vibe. Cities empty out, beaches are packed there's just not the motivation to work in that month. It's difficult. So yes, this is definitely something to consider when you're coming here. And how you can make the most of that is that you just soak up the atmosphere. There's something super special about relaxed, easygoing afternoons, mornings, days. Gosh, it's part of the essence of this country sometimes. And you notice it more in the summer and it's wonderful. And I, I say to you to soak up as much of it as you can. Um, if you are not so keen on being surrounded by groups of large families and having kids running around everywhere, consider some Lidos, have a look into some that perhaps um, can give you a bit more privacy, for example. Um, but it's all part of the atmosphere. It's all part of the magic of holidaying here in South Italy. So I hope that whenever you come here, you have an incredible time. And if you have any questions about South Italy, in particular, comment below and I will do my best to answer them. I will see you in the next video.